Our story begins with Ma, sheltered from a cruel world like a bird in a cage, looking out through the only window she has, an old laptop. She paints a picture of a dark life filled with abuse. After the separation of her family, her mother and sister Sarani taken from her, leaving Ma to fester in her self-loathing. Talking to her sister through email brings light to her dismal life. Until one day, the mail stops coming, festering in her cage, not knowing what happened to her dear sister. Alone, with a man so defeated, he turns to the bottle for answers, drinking his shame away night after night. Until one night, everything comes to a boil, dangerous, drunk, and defeated. Grabbing a nearby hatchet, he comes after the only symbol of his failed marriage left. Spitting insult after insult, and raising the hatchet high above his head. Mai doesn't mind, reaching peace with her miserable life, closing her eyes to meet her end. But something from deep within takes over. A will to live wrestles the weapon from her father and strikes. She has the drunk man on his back now. Dazed from the fall, the hate in his eyes replaced with terror, crying for mercy, begging and pleading with his caged bird. Blood sprays from the strike, and the next, and the next, until his pleas turn to a sickly gurgling. A now blood-coated Mai looks down at the corpse of what was her father. The image burned into her mind, the sounds of his pleas etched forever. Pondering how she got here. One moment she was ready to die, and the next sitting beside the corpse of her father. Miss Toyama. Maya looked at the face of the adult. It was self defense. The courts. Maya tosses the word around in her head self defense. Closing her eyes once more to see the grisly scene. Part of her isn't sure that it was truly self-defense. She opens her eyes to see the countryside, flying by a car window, scrolling through her smartphone, reading through old emails. About a year ago, Saane was talking about getting sent to an all-girls school. Wordsworth. As the car pulled to a stop, and Mai's phone lost all connection to the outside world, she understood why she hasn't heard from her sister in so long. A social worker introduces Midra, the headmaster of the all-girls orphanage. Midra claims it's a school for troubled young women. Mai asks to see Sane, but the conversation turns sour. She's never been here. In fact, we've never had a student here by that name. Mai panics, far from home with no one to turn to, her cool composure broken, frantic to see Sane. She screams and yells until her voice is hoarse, then is escorted to her room, falling to a troubled sleep, where she hears Sane. An old school in a run-down mining town, with no connection to the modern world she knows. And this is only the prologue. Writer Makoto Kandoin and the team at RPG Gaaporos really started out strong. The game kept me guessing the whole way through. But would I expect anything less from the writer of Corpse Party? Death End Request 2 is a horror JRPG, one of the finest with a slow burn and an improved combat system. More on that later. A lot of the story is told to the player through dialogue, with some still images, excellent voice work to set the mood, and some music. The game is split into two sides. The daytime, where Maya can converse with the students of Wordsworth, and the night, where the party explores the monster-infested streets of La Chau. This. It's tea time with Torla, your Halloween special, on a game that, honestly, I love. It's a flawed gem, that's for sure, 
Perhaps this won't be for everyone, but I hope that you all enjoyed the intro. Without further ado, let us get on to combat. The combat's what I like to think of as monster builds. Each character takes turns so that you have three spells and abilities to use, with secondary effects like stun, poison, or knockback. The latter being used to score bonus damage on the vile monsters of the night by smashing them into walls, other monsters, and party members for massive combos. It's a decent system with a few quirks, like the overkill mechanic. By dealing more than two times the health pool of a monster, rewards the player with bonus experience. Clearing all the field bugs will reward the player with bonus money. But let me explain what field bugs are. In the footage here, you can see these blots of color on the ground. They are field bugs. They come in a few variety. Most are harmless when stepped on, but give a buff when broken. This comes with corruption, but unlike the first game, most field bugs don't deal damage. So there's no risk to use most of them. This makes most encounters about getting characters to transform into the glitch mode through field bug corruption. Corruption can be acquired through field bugs or by taking damage. When a party member reaches 80% corruption or higher, the party member in question transforms into the glitch mode, giving them access to a powerful attack with strong effects attached, like Mai who will take no damage until the end of her next turn and Rotti who will fully heal the party. When in glitch mode, a character will use 10% corruption a turn to maintain it. If you use the powerful attack mentioned before, glitch mode ends. Well, simplistic combat is rather satisfying, but can be somewhat tedious. There is an auto battle mechanic, but I do recommend not using it. It is very ineffectual. But that brings me to the cast. There's Mai, the protagonist, driven in a quest to find Sayana. The visage of her father's rage haunts her, leaving her fearful of men. She tends to be cold to her clingy roommate, Rotten Dollheart. Rotto, or Rotti for short. Daughter of the headmaster, Midra. And trying to support Mai in the quest to find Sayane. Ruddy gets very attached, quickly, and tends to be a little smothering with her emotions. Mai treats Roddy very cold, but being so introverted and shut away from the world for so long, her social skills are... poor. The dynamic between the two is rather interesting, with Mai being very cold most of the time and finding the majority of people annoying and a waste of time. But you really see how caring and sisterly Mai can be when Liliana is introduced later in the game. Liliana being the youngest and toughest of the bunch, acting as the team's take. She wishes to follow in her father's footsteps to become an exorcist to expel the demons from the world. Her strong will and massive sweet tooth make her a great character to fill out the roster. But I mentioned Midra there, the headmaster, and Rati's mother, of course. But she's always seems to be hiding something. She's some sort of dark secret. I think I know what that is. I think she is secretly Mercy from Overwatch. Well, okay, not really. But I can tell you that she is voiced by Sayaka Ohara, who is the Japanese voice of Mercy, 
and there are definitely similarities between the characters. Hair color, skin tone, posture, and that soothing voice. It's a very weak connection, but I will forever connect these characters in my head as the same. My first playthrough put me just over the 40 hour mark. This is a game with multiple choices throughout, and some lead to instant game overs known as Death End, which I actually recommend getting because the game rewards you in the event viewer with bonus money, sometimes weapons, for getting these events. I had avoided most of them and uh, forgot about the event viewer entirely. It is a very forgettable mechanic. I believe it's click in on the left stick in the menu. I'll get some footage for you. But I'm not going to show you much because I don't want to spoil anything. Very few of the choices have any major impact on the plot since a lot of the choices for the game boil down to one fight at the end. And in some regards that's not great. In others I think it's fine. Having to play through half the game again just to get a different ending or a different set of circumstances could be very tedious. But there is New Game Plus, which adds a whole new craziness to the game. Because events aren't the same the second time through, and changes happen almost immediately with even the title screen, which I won't show because it's a giant spoiler. There is one choice though in the middle, there's six options, and each of them have a dynamic change on that chapter in particular. I believe it is, I don't have it listed here so I don't remember, but it is one of the only big options that changes a lot in the game. It is, I would say, one of the more fun choices and worth saves coming to see them all. Since you can save mid-conversation, unfortunately the cause and effect from the choice to the show off is a few minutes, so we'll have to see. Now, I'm not going to spoil anything like I said, but I will give you some free advice if you want to play the game and direct you on how to get all the endings without spoiling anything. At the very end of the game, in chapter 10, there are three fights that happen. If you lose the first one, that is how you get the bad ending. If you win all three, you get the true ending or the good ending, depending on if it's your first or second playthrough. Please note that you are required to get the good ending to proceed to New Game Plus. But I want to talk about the music and how it builds this game's great, spooky, unnerving atmosphere. Uh, composer Yuki Sugira is back, writing most of the soundtrack with two songs credited to Kenji Kaneko, uh, Dissonance, a creepy ass atmospheric piece, and the other I won't even name since it's for a secret encounter. I used all the best tracks that I thought fit the mood I was going for with this video, plus my favorite song from the first game, Alt Silence. Again, this is a spoiler-free video, so closing out the video. Death's End Request 2 is a great improvement on the first game in many areas, and I look forward to the third game, which is most definitely coming after that ending, and I want it to answer the questions that this game and the first left unanswered. Like, how is Sheena even in this game? When does the second game take place in respect to the first game? This game is on par with, or slightly better than the first, but both playing quite understandably different, and you need to actually have played both to know where this story is and where it is going. Uh, if you like Asian horror games with a lot of build-up and don't mind JRPG combat, I think this is one of the best niche Japanese games of the year. I hope you enjoyed, like if you liked. Uh, even if you just watched the intro, then you wouldn't be here, but, but until next time.
またね。